Peep, what kind of dog is Buddy? Buddy the dog. Buddy, he, look up there. He's a dorky. <laughs> Do you think that a dorky is considered a an endangered or rare species of animal? It's not endangered. <laughs> he could be rare. <laughs> <laughs> okay, as far as you know, have I ever been a terrorist? No. Pedophile? No. Uh, have I ever sold ammunition or guns over the internet? No. <laughs> Do you think that I'm a danger to society? No. Are you that, sure? I know that for a fact. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. YouTube thinks I'm a danger to society. I don't think so. <laughs> they banned me. <laughs> I got banned. Along with lots of other people, we all got banned. The only danger is you might back into them. With oh, that's great. <laughs> That's great. See, that's a whole other story, people, and we're not going to tell that story. <laughs> Stories. <laughs> okay, so you don't think I'm dangerous. That's You're good. You're not dangerous. All right, good. <laughs> Mr. Bill Poker Peeps, welcome to the vlog. Oh, it's been a long time, people. That's because I think I'm a danger to society. Or at least YouTube thinks so. I've been banned. And of course, as you guys know, I'm not the only one. It happened to Nimi, Brad Owen, Ryan DiPaolo, uh, I think Boski. I have a whole bunch of poker vloggers were all banned for a short time or a long time or whatever. <laughs> For my case, they said that I uh, violated the regulated commerce clause, which means I really, they thought I talked about online casinos, which I did not. Um, the worst part about it was, there's absolutely no explanation. It's just, you get a strike, you cannot post for eight days, they don't give you a timestamp, they don't tell you what you did, you appeal it, they just say, nope, sorry, and it's all done by bots, I'm sure, that listen for things. Very, very frustrating. Eventually, I got my complaint taken to uh, Team YouTube on Twitter, and they actually resolved my issues. So, I am back up and running, and this happens to be vlog number 100. It's not video 100, I put out way more than that, but vlog number 100. Holy cow, I never ever thought that I would do this many. It takes a tremendous amount of time and effort to do each one. You have to work through burnout and then feeling like your videos aren't mundane, coming up with new ideas, learning software. So to get to 100, I am pretty happy about that. Again, my goal was never to uh, make a lot of money or get a huge base. It was to pass things along, uh, teach some people, have a legacy for my kids. So I've been very successful that way. But no great fanfare for this one, just your regular old poker vlog. Uh, I simply haven't had time to do <laughs> anything that has fanfare. So, because I haven't put out a video in about three weeks, this vlog is just going to have some highlight hands from many different sessions, either interesting or important hands, a couple of live hands from my uh, poker league. So, here we go. All right, it's Thursday, January 24th. Uh, my buddy Brant got a free hotel room at Windstar, so I was going to come meet him out here. So I had, I was on my way, I was going to get here at 11 o'clock, I got to Gainesville. That's about 10 minutes from the casino. And the guy in front of me in the car hit two dogs, and one of them had to have weighed 80, 85 pounds. Thankfully, there weren't a whole lot of people on the road, it was just... He and I, uh, I was able to dodge the rolling dog who got killed, but this guy's car was a mess. So I stopped behind him to make sure that nobody was hurt. Well, they their car was just a mess. It had to get towed. They have to be coming to Windstar too. So I waited and I gave him a ride. I know that if I was in that spot, I would want somebody to help me. So I thought it was my duty and I think God would want me to stop and help them so I did that so I'm getting to the casino a little bit after midnight now let's go let's hope my helpfulness and good deeds results in a little karma coming back <laughs> 
Well, in fact, on Thursday, I did have good karma. Didn't play very many hands, only played for two hours. I hit three rivers <laughs> to win hands and won about $200. So good deed, in turn, good karma. Unfortunately, that did not continue into Friday. I have a couple of hands against an ex-dealer at Windstar. His name is Chris. Very, very personable, good guy. Likes to mix it up, plays hands without looking sometimes. So I sit down at the table and Chris immediately he says, oh, I gotta get on the Mr. Bill poker vlog. <laughs> so we played these couple of hands. I'm in middle position one with king of diamond, five of diamonds, not a stellar hand. Uh, there's a number of limpers to me. I limp, there's another guy behind me limps. Uh, Chris in the small blind makes it $15 and I am the only one to call. So the flop with $42 in the pot comes queen nine five rainbow. Chris makes it $15. I got a pair. Chris is kind of crazy. I make the call. Uh, the turn with 72 in the pot is a seven. Chris makes a 20. I make the call. Um, the river with 112 in the pot is a four. Chris makes a 30. I make the call. He announces that he has ace high, so my pair of fives win. So there you are, Chris. A very, very small hand that made the vlog. Oh, but we got one more coming up. The next hand, I have $325, I have pocket fours. Uh, I limp in, it ends up being six of us at $3, including Chris. Uh, the flop with $18 in the pot comes, eight of clubs, four of spades, two of clubs, yay me. The small blind makes it $15. I make it 35 and Chris in the cutoff shoves all in for $104. <laughs> I of course call, the other guy folds. The board with 241 in the pot <laughs> on a limped hand that grew quite quickly uh, comes ace of hearts, nine of spades, I show my set, and Chris mocks. I think eventually he did good that day, just didn't do well against me. All right, now let's turn our attention to Rockets on January 27th. I got three hands to talk about there. Uh, the first one, I have Ace of Clubs, 10 of Clubs on the button. I have $540. Uh, the plus one, middle position one, and the hijack all limp to me. I make it $20. The big blind calls, and all of them call. The one I'm concerned about is middle position one, who has $1,100. He's the big stack. The flop with 101 in the pot comes King of Diamonds, Queen of Clubs, Jack of Diamonds, Bingo Bongo, I flop, Broadway. There's a check, the plus one goes all in for $40. <laughs> the middle position, who's the big stack, makes the call. The hijack then shoves all in, he only has $70. It comes to me, I really want the MP1 to call here, so I raise it up to only $120. Uh, he does not call. He shoves all in for my effective stack of $520. Of course, I snap call. So now I'm looking for the board simply not to pair and for there not to be another diamond. And the board runs out, queen, which matches, and eight of diamonds, unbelievable. But I do beat the MP1 for the biggest pot. He has king jack for two pair. The hijack wins the other one. He had called with Two three of diamonds. <laughs> nice call, buddy. And that's sometimes what you get at some of these uh, club games. It can be very, very loose and not the greatest play in the world. <laughs> All right, this next hand is a pretty good indication, again, of club play that is uh, pretty loose. <laughs> I have Ace of Hearts, Queen of Clubs. In the small blind, I have $850. Middle position one makes it $15. Uh, middle position two, hijack, cutoff, and the button all make the call. It comes to me, I make it $100. Middle position one, middle position two, the hijack and the cutoff all call. So pre-flop, we've already got in the pot $518. And the flop comes, eight of hearts, six of hearts, four of diamonds, swing and a miss for Mr. Bill. I check, middle position one goes all in for $120. The next guy folds, the hijack makes the call. The cutoff then goes all in for $55. And only the hijack has any money left. He's only got 70 left. So even though I have nothing except for two overs, because the pot is so big, I make the call. The turn has $933 in the pot. It's the seven of diamonds, still no help for me. 
the hijack goes all in for seventy dollars now it cost me seventy dollars but the pot has over a thousand in it uh could i spike an ace or a queen and win maybe uh anyhow i have to make the call for seventy dollars the river is the king of hearts and I win the big side pot because he had a missed diamond draw with ace of diamonds, ten of diamonds, my ace queen won that pot. Middle position one had pocket aces and old crazy Joe, you've seen him on my vlog before, had five six of clubs and had a straight. But we do have some yearly awards to give. Everybody loves this part. We have a category called Terminator. And this is recognized for the most amazing quantity of kills. <laughs> this year, clocking in with 80 total kills, Mr. Bill Boofer. Hey. <laughs> then we have a category called Walking ATM. This is a category for the most amount of money that you win throughout the year. Now, two years straight, this family member has knocked me out of the first place position in the very last tournament. So coming in this year at $5,230, Mr. Bill Boofer. My son won last year, so. <laughs> so uh, incredible and strong finishes with league leading 3,744 points. Yours truly. Hey! <laughs> this year this player has 49 out of 49. So we had two non ops that would be nothing. Yours truly. <laughs> <laughs> mean old Larry Avarello took me out. Tell him, Larry. Tell him, Larry. He got crushed me. He crushed me. It may be that everyone's playing for second place to Carl, Leader, Fry. He's crushing everybody. Look at those chips. Of course, the fix is in. His daughter's dealing. <laughs> WNPL Tournament Champions Final Table. There they are. What a gang. One best of best. And I was the I was the donkey who said no chopping the last minute. Yeah, there you go. Good luck, everybody. Oh, I got one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wednesday night poker league. Wednesday night poker league extra game. Or losers lounge or whatever they call it. Well, of course, I'm there. I'm there too. I just have to wait. All right, this next hand happened at the Tournament of Champions for my Wednesday Poker League. It was in the cash game. We're going to do this as a you be the villain. The actual villain against me was Brant. All right, you are in the cutoff with nine of hearts, nine of clubs. Uh, it's a one limper to you. You make it $12. I call the $12 and the big blind calls. The flop with 48 in the pot comes. Ace of hearts, 10 of hearts, two spades, and it checks to you. You go ahead and make the check. The turn, nine of diamonds, bingo bongo for you. Uh, it goes check, check, check to you, who is Brant. <laughs> and Brant bets $25. I make the call. The other two players make the call also. So the river, and it's the jack of spades. It goes check, check, check to you, Brant, and you bet $60. Mr. Bill then makes it $160. The other two players fold, and now it's back to you. What do you do, and what could you possibly put me on that would either be losing hands for you or bluffs by me? Brant ends up making the fold face up, and I just can't believe it. <laughs> Mr. Bill had slow played pocket aces for flop set of aces and you, Brant, made what I consider to be an unbelievable fold. Brant and I have talked about this hand quite a bit. I think we agreed that if the jack doesn't come on the end and it's a uh, nothing card, a three or something like that, that I probably get paid because then he can take uh, queen king away and then I only beat him with pro aces or tens. Uh, but because that came, there's a lot more hands that get in there and beat him. So credit to Brant for a great fold. I don't know if I could have done it. Um, the only way you can do that there is if you think I cannot raise with two pair or, or if you don't think I have enough bluffs. But 
Great read. Good job, Mr. Villain. WNPL Wednesday Night Poker, we're down to two tables. I have 41,000. I was down to 3,700 in the first level, so I'm feeling pretty good. I have 127,000. Next biggest is 20,000, so doing really, really well. Final table. Final table of nine. Here we go. Wednesday Night Poker League. Let's go. I think I have the chip lead at the moment. David raised the 16. Larry called. And in the big blind. Check. I mean, oh, yes, sorry, sorry. Ooh, Larry just won a massive pot. We're down to three. Larry, Scott, and myself. Navarello has an absolutely monstrous chip lead at the moment. Let's see if we can't do something about that. Nines against fours. Damn. Oh, not that. Eight. All righty. All right, heads up, me and Larry. Finally. Larry's one of the best players in our league, so he might have any best. That's him. He has way more chips than me. Good luck, bud. <laughs> are really, really close in chips. It is a 50-50 proposition. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm not gonna whip it out so you can see it on the camera. Good there it is. Oh, hell. You, you may have me covered. I think you might. Final table lasted what? About five minutes. <laughs> and we uh, we don't have any big blinds. I think Larry. Well, I think that most people we had five big blinds. So <laughs> it's a good game. He beat me a six against Jack Queen. Larry, great job. All right, good game, buddy. Good job. All right, this next set of hands comes from Rockets. Uh, we played in I think February second. Um, got some interesting hands here. All right, this first hand, I am in middle position one with $495. I have five of clubs, five of spades. There's one limper to me, I limp. Uh, Nick, who is a really aggressive player, he has $550. He makes it 35, the big blind calls, the first limper calls, and I make the call. The flop, with 141 in the pot, comes four of clubs, five of hearts, six of hearts. So I have a set. Um, it checks to me, I make it $60. Nick makes the call and the other two players fold. Obviously, I'm putting Nick on some kind of overpair here, so I think that I can get some value on this hand. The turn with $261 in the pot is the two of clubs. I make it $200. He makes the call. The river now with $661 in the pot is the eight of clubs. It does bring in a straight. It does bring in clubs. I don't think he has either of those. I think he's got an over pair. I go all in this time for $200 more. He makes the call. I show my set of fives and he mucks. The very, very next hand, I play against a woman named Lisa who's pretty much a kryptonite for me. Um, let's just say she plays uniquely. She likes to get it in behind, suck out on the river, and rip out your soul. So I'm in the plus one with $1,065. I have pocket sevens. Lisa has $180. She limps in. I limp. Nick again. He's the one who just lost that big hand. Goes all in for 55, and I expected this. Uh, Lisa makes the call. I then comes to me. Then I go all in because she only has $180. She plays awful hands. I'm so far ahead of her range with pocket sevens. Uh, she does make the call, however. So there is $418 in the pot, and the board comes. Jack of hearts, 10 of diamonds, three of clubs, three of diamonds, Bingo, bongo, seven of diamonds. I hit a full house. I show my full house, Nick folds, and Lisa says, I have a full house too. <laughs> she has pocket tens, ugh. 
This time, she didn't use her strategy of getting it all in behind and then sucking out on the river. She actually was ahead the whole time. Good hand. All right, when I do this next hand, remember the you be the villain hand and what happened there. I am under the gun with pocket aces, ace of clubs, ace of spades. I have $550, I make it $20. Nick immediately to my left makes the call. Brant, my buddy, uh, in middle position one makes the call and the cutoff makes the call. The flop with 83 in the pot comes king of clubs, three of clubs, five of clubs. So I've got an over pair and the nut flush draw. I make it 40. Nick and Brant both make the call and the last player folds. The turn with $203 in the pot is the six of clubs. Now, I know immediately I'm not going to bet this card. I'm trying to give off a reverse tell, so I'm stacking my chips and I'm counting my chips like I'm gonna make a bet. I get them close to the line and then I check. Nick checks behind and then Brant bets $75. There's almost $300 in the pot. I'm going to raise it up here. I make it 160. Nick makes the call, surprisingly, and Brant folds his cards. The river with 598 in the pot is the Jack of Hearts. Uh, I go all in for Nick's effective stack of $210 and he folds. He had Jack of Clubs, Four of Clubs for a lesser flush. He had to call because there was a straight flush and there's a huge bonus if you get a straight flush at this club, 10% uh, of the bad beat or 5% of the bad beat or something like that. Uh, Brant had the two red aces. He smooth called just like I did in that one thing. He was trying to trap me. Uh, he was smart enough to realize when the clubs came out that it did not work in his favor. Again, this is a hand that Brant and I have talked about a lot. Was there any way for me to get any more money from him? And I simply don't think there was. I think Nick made a mistake by not bombing it when he had uh, the two clubs. Of course, it wouldn't have mattered. He would have just lost his money that way. But I think the right play there would be to get it all in. All right, last hand. We can't do a hand at Rockets without having a little suck out action. <laughs> so here we are. I'm in the big blind with $1,200. I have pocket aces. Uh, there's three limpers. The button makes it $25. I raise it up to 65, the cutoff and the button call. The flop with $206 in the pot is 1063 rainbow. I lead out for $80. Uh, the next guy folds. The button goes all in for only $165. I make the call. The board comes with a seven and a jack. And when the jack hits, he says, ooh, that's a bad card for you. <laughs> he has 10 jack. Uh, wouldn't be club poker if you didn't get sucked out on quite often. So I hope you guys enjoyed those hands. I thought they were kind of interesting. Um, so what's coming up and what's going on with me? Uh, as I said, this was my 100th vlog. And honestly, right now I am lacking in motivation and I've got some burnout. Actually, my motivations have changed. Um, where I don't have a whole lot of motivation right now in doing the vlog, it's getting really, really rough to do every time. I do have a lot more motivation about uh, life things, uh, business things, family, friends, and my direction has started to point more there. Uh, my buddy, Rob Jenkins, another great poker player, uh, gave me a book called Tribe of Millionaires. It's on motivation in life and business. Fantastic book, I read it in uh, about a day and a half. Um, also, my church is having a series on married life and how to make your uh, married life better, which is again, it's just effort and work and, and doing things that you should do that apply not only to your marriage, but to your, uh, your life and your relationships with other people. So I've been concentrating on those. So we'll see how many vlogs I put out. We, uh, Hopefully I get my motivation back, but we will see. I am very motivated, however, for doing group study, group think, meeting with friends and uh, people that I enjoy getting along with very much. Um, again, the one of the Tribe of Millionaire concepts was that we are better together and that putting our brains together as a group, we can actually accomplish quite a bit more. That's the multiplier theory, and I have been thinking about that for my group study. Um, I want to do a more structured group study with people that, um, that I really really trust another tribe of millionaires concept that you have to have people that you can trust but very excited I think I've got a group of people who I want to try and start doing uh, some serious poker study with on a structured and consistent basis and we'll see where that leads and I will fill you guys in on how that goes 
and the Windstar uh, President's Day series is this week. I hate that they do it around Valentine's Day every year, and they do. I plan on playing in one or two events this time. Hopefully the main event we will see. I haven't played a whole lot of tournaments lately, uh, so I may be a little rusty, but I'm a pretty good tournament player, so I'm looking forward to that. If you see me out at Windstar, please uh, give me a shout out, say hello. All right, with that, let's end this vlog. Thank you guys so much for your patience <laughs> since I haven't put one of these out in a while. Uh, thanks for watching and subscribing and pressing buttons and doing all the great stuff and uh, uh, supporting me on my YouTube band, which I got a uh, number of, of comments about. So you guys have a wonderful, fantastic, and blessed week, and I'll see you next time. Bye.